Hey guys, this is Crystal from OTP HVAC School, and today we're going to talk about step down transformers and how to test them. So, what is one basic way we know if a transformer is bad or not? Does anything come on in your unit? Anything at all? Inside? furnace or electric air handler, or your outdoor unit. Do either of those come on? A light on the board? Anything? It's fine. Let's get started today and see some simple things you can do to find out if it is indeed the culprit or what else it could be. For this, you'll need a volt meter. It doesn't have to be a clamp meter. As long as it reads volts AC, you are good to go. First and foremost, you're going to need to know where your transformer is. Now, your transformer is going to be located near your blower housing. And this is going to be whether you have gas heating or electric heating. For obvious reasons, electrical components need to be in a cooler area. Not all transformers are going to look the same. Some of them are going to have the quick connectors or spades if you'd like to call them. Some of them have the wires, but all of them are going to have this telltale iron core uh, right here. This is what's known as a step down transformer. Uh, this is a residential step down transformer. So how can you tell if your transformer is bad? Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, today we are taking a look at the step down transformer. This is going to be a residential transformer. In this case, this one is going to be going from 120 volts here on your line down to your 24 volts, which is your load. Um, we are going to be going in the simplest terms possible. What it's doing is it's taking your high voltage and it's doing a step down, which means it's transferring the energy via this electromagnetic core to 24 volts. And we'll kind of get into the science of that later. But essentially, that is what it does. So how do we know if it's good or bad? Well, with one of these, a lot of times, uh, if you can just remove this from out of the unit and you see a big dark spot right here, normally it's on your low side voltage, which is the 24 volt side. Uh, and if you're smelling something really chemically burned, um, we all know that smell. Uh, it's usually bad. Uh, another uh, common indicator that the transformer is bad is if your indoor uh, heating unit and your outdoor air conditioning unit is not coming on. Nothing no lights on your control board, uh, blower doesn't come on, any of that. This can be a culprit. So how do you test if this is actually good or bad within the unit? Here I have simulated your neutral and your 120. And this is gonna be your high side power or your line. And what we're doing is we're gonna take this 120 here and put our meter on the load side or the 24 volts AC and we should be able to tell with our voltmeter whether it's sending out the proper voltage. In most cases a transformer is either working or it's not. Let's make sure that you have the correct voltage coming into the unit just to narrow it down. So I've attached my leads here, one on each terminal, and now I'm going to simulate the machine coming on. Now remember, in 
of gas furnaces, it will have a door switch, usually centralized between the gas burners, um, your gas valve, all of those, or the uh, blower housing. And more often than not, it's gonna be where the blower housing is. So make sure before you turn your heat on, that door switch is either taped down or someone is there to tape it down for you and then turn on the heat. So we should be reading somewhere between 121 to roughly about 123 volts AC. And there we go. So we got 122. Perfect. So we know we have the correct voltage. Now that we know we're getting our high side voltage, we now want to check and make sure that we have our low side voltage coming out of the transformer. Okay, again, we're going to repeat the same cycle. Um, I've hooked my leads on here because I'm hooking it up with my test box and it's kind of hard to do two things at once, but you need to have one lead on each one of these terminals. Uh, do not test against ground. You will not get an accurate reading, especially since a lot of units do not have properly grounded wires. So here we're going to simulate our 120. And as you can see, since it's alternating current, we are reading between 26 to 28 to 29 volts AC. So we are good to go, and that is doing what it should be. So why is it good to know how to identify whether it's a transformer uh, issue or uh, something potentially going wrong in your unit? Well, one reason is that often when this side goes bad on your transformer, your 24 volt side, it usually means you have a short somewhere. And so you're going to need to be able to identify where that short is coming from. So usually when we are trying to locate these shorts, uh, especially technicians, it's not really super practical when you're a homeowner, unless you're going to be doing this quite often. But having something with a resettable fuse in, um, especially in residential, you want a three amp or a five amp. Um, resettable fuse and all that means is if there's a short somewhere uh, this is going to catch it and pop and you'll be able and you'll be able to uh, find out where it's coming from so these little guys are going to go down into the board which I'm just using this little bitty guy for simplicity and easiness uh, this is your fuse just take that out a lot of times when it's bad, it'll be charred right there, or that little Z will be cut in half. Uh, and then you're gonna take these and plug them in here. And different control boards are gonna look differently. If it's an older control board, it might not actually have a fuse in it, in which case you're gonna put a fuse in line. Um, for testing purposes. So you could do something like this here and uh, it's harder to do it this way because you're going to have to actually splice and wire nut in, something like that. But we're checking to see if it is popping the fuse and you really need one of these in your home. Um, make sure that it's no higher than a 5 amp fuse in residential. Don't use auto parts because their amps are going to be much higher. So when we're testing for this, you can use one of these and it's going to catch that short and pop this. Do not leave this in there. It's not meant to be a permanent solution, uh, especially for safety. Make sure you remove this once you're finished. So this is really great at just 
sort of tracking down where that short's coming from. If it's coming from, say, ground, bad ground, uh, if it's coming from a wire touching somewhere, bad thermostat. Um, and we can get into that later with the wiring and what could also be causing the short. But in this one, we're just covering, you know, whether you've got a bad transformer or not. But when you do, just be aware um, that there's probably something else going on in that unit. Hopefully it was just a one-time deal and you just popped your transformer because something touched or some sort of power surge and that's it. So as I mentioned before, if you do have one of those units that are super old and on your control board, you actually don't have one of these fuses, I would suggest actually putting one in line from your transformer uh, and you'll have wires coming back from your 24 volt line that you could actually put one in line on one of these legs of 24 volt. It doesn't need to be on both, just one. Uh, you can wire nut this in line and keep that there to pop in case you do have a short. Um, we actually have these here. They're pretty handy and nice, and they just look cool, professional, uh, and completely insulated. Yeah, just something simple like this that you can make, where you just take the female terminals and crimp them onto, it doesn't need to be anything crazy, like maybe a 14 gauge wire to 16 gauge, totally fine. And just clip those on there and wire it in. So hopefully this helps give you guys an idea of what you're looking for when a transformer goes bad and how it functions within your unit. Thank you so much for joining us today um, and I hope you have a great rest of your week.